Hi everyone, I'm Tom Jorgensen, here to take you through everything you may have missed in Chapter 5 of Stranger Things 2, Dig Dug. We'll be digging our way into some spoilers, so consider yourself warned. And consider me terribly, terribly embarrassed of that joke. This is the first of two episodes of Stranger Things 2, helmed by Finding Nemo and WALL-E director Andrew Stanton. The title of the episode, Dig Dug, is of course a reference to the 1982 Namco arcade game of the same name, which appears in the season premiere. Dig Dug's a game about going underground to kill monsters. Now where have I heard that one before? Will's been struggling with monsters lately, but it looks like he's not afraid of sharks. He's got a Jaws poster on his bedroom wall. The next Spielberg reference is the one that all us folks who lost our minds when Sean Astin was cast in Stranger Things 2 have been waiting for. As Mike is explaining to Bob that they need to find the X on Will's map of the tunnels, Bob laughs and says, what's at the X, pirate treasure? Bob's disbelief would probably royally piss off Mikey Walsh, his treasure hunting character from the Goonies. Keith the arcade attendant calls Max Road Warrior. Apparently Mad Max wasn't good enough for him, so he had to go for the sequel. Maybe she'll graduate to Thunderdome next season. We get yet another Empire Strikes Back reference when Keith brings Max into a back room under false pretenses, only to have Lucas surprise her. This is similar to a scene in Empire when Lando brings Han, Leia, and company into a dining room to be ambushed by Darth Vader and Boba Fett. The quick cut shots of Dustin gearing up to trap Dart in his storm cellar call to mind the scene from Evil Dead 2 where Ash equips his chainsaw for the first time. As Bob is figuring out Will's map of the tunnel system, he points out Sattler's Quarry, which is where the Department of Energy planted the fake body of Will Byers last season. When Jonathan and Nancy arrive at Murray's house, I guess, he tells them that he hopes they haven't come to tell him about the bear in Steve Harrington's backyard last year, a reference to their fight with the Demogorgon. They still have scars from that night, having cut their hands to bait the Demogorgon with their blood, as you can see before they go to sleep in the motel. When Eleven is dropped off at her mother's house, the trucker giving her a lift refers to the address as 515 Larrabee. Eleven corrects him, saying 515, just as Hopper corrected her reading of the clock in Chapter 1. Murray's wacko Hawkins conspiracy board with all the strings has the missing poster for Will Byers, a drawing of Eleven on which he's written Russian question mark, and a map of Moscow because he will just not let this Russian thing go. Finally, after Mike's dad answers the door and is a total jerk, Dustin says, you're really no help at all, you know that? That's not really a thing I think you would have missed necessarily, I'm just taking this as an opportunity to proffer my opinion that Ted Wheeler is the absolute worst character on Stranger Things. That's everything we found in Chapter 5, Dig Dug. Did we miss anything? Do you agree with me that Ted Wheeler is a black hole of a human being? Let us know in the comments, and for more of what you missed in Stranger Things 2, check out our breakdowns of everything you missed in the next episodes, and be sure to follow and subscribe wherever you like to watch IGN.